It's Charlie from Daily Motor. Today we've got the sound system demo of the 2021 Hyundai Santa Fe and its 12 speaker 630 watt Harman Kardon audio system. This is going to be an in-depth review. We're going to take a look at how the infotainment system works, take a look at speaker locations, audio inputs, audio controls, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, then get out on the road and listen to these sample tracks while we're rolling, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. If you don't care about any of that stuff at the beginning, you just want to hear the music, click ahead in the video, we've got chapters that'll get you right to the music. Before we get started, let's hop out and take a look at the car. The uh, just borderline mid-size crossover from Hyundai. Seeing a nice refresh here for 2021. This isn't the very top level calligraphy trim, which gives you some even nicer leather, some more unique looks, but this limited trim has got quite a lot going for it as well. And this is a hybrid model, which makes it quite economical. So if you want to see more on the Santa Fe, check the link in the description, see those. And we always do these tests with lossless, uncompressed WAV audio files on a USB stick plugged directly into the system and high quality binaural microphones in both of my ears, giving you the most realistic audio system demo on YouTube. We also do the test with the sound settings set to their factory defaults. So let's take a look at those now. Nice standard Hyundai infotainment system here. It works very well. It's a little dated looking, but it's effective. So we've got our media screen here, but you can see we can also go home. You got all your different apps, kind of a home screen, if you will. Let's go into setup, sound. First thing you got is this Quantum Logic Surround premium sound option. I'm gonna leave that on for now, but we'll t actually we'll toggle it on and off and we'll leave it on for the test. Quite a different sound. It'll be interesting to play around with that more when we're on the road. You have your standard front, rear, left, right, fader, and balance, and then treble, mid-range, and bass. Let's go through those. And below that, you have a few different random volume settings for navigation and guidance, things like that. For audio controls in the Cinefe, you've got a really nice volume knob, very easy to grab, nice clicks. Then you've got a volume rocker on the left side of the wheel. For track selection, you can either use this seek and track button, you can use the touch screen if you're on the media screen, you can use this roller knob for various track selection abilities, and then you've got a rocker on the left side of the steering wheel right by the volume control. For audio inputs, you have your standard AM, FM, Sirius, XM, satellite radio, Bluetooth, USB-A, which is surprising not to see any USB-C ports, so just one USB-A up here. Unless there's one, is there one hiding down there? Well, there is a USB port, but I don't think it does data. So you just got the one USB-A, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but you do have wireless capability for both of those as well, so that's nice to see. And that is it. So what does that mean you're missing? Well, no disc player. No 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input jack, and like I said, no, SU, no USB type C, which is a bit of a shame here in 2021. Speaker locations, like I said, this is a 12 speaker system. Starting in the bottom left, we've got one, two, three, four, five. And then the best I could find is that these rear speakers are actually doubled. So you've got six, seven, eight, nine. And then coming into the trunk, we've got a subwoofer back here making 10 and 1112 D-pillar mounted speakers right there. Android Auto and Apple CarPlay demonstrations. Let's start out with Android Auto. Now it does seem like I do have to plug in the device to get it to start doing Android Auto. Doesn't seem to be a way to pair it wirelessly at this time. So we're going to have to stop the music because there's only one USB port. Plug in the device. And then we're prompted with an Android Auto message and there we go android auto so it does this kind of smaller three-quarter screen deal but you've got your uh music right there main home screen ways everything's decently responsive and there's your settings screen okay let's try out carplay there we go it takes up the same size of screen got your home screen there music settings all looks good and responds nicely all right, let's get the tunes going again and get on the road.
of interesting things to note about this Harman Kardon system. The only thing it's really missing in order to elevate it up to that next level would be an absence of noise. So what's happening is each of those drum hits or uh, those, those notes that are coming through, the really upscale systems make the sound and then get out of the way. The absence of sound, the silence is just as important as the sound itself. This comes through a little too strong in the mid ranges and then there's an echo, a hollowness afterward. So the speakers aren't really good at, at making the sound and then stopping vibrating, getting out of the way. But overall, the balance is pretty good. I'm getting a decent amount of lower end power and some good high ends as well. So perfectly acceptable system. Now, if this were in a luxury car, we'd be having a little bit more of a complaint, but in this setting, pretty darn good. This next one, let's turn the bass all the way up and see how that sounds. maybe you'd be a little bit more disappointed but this is perfectly fine objectively speaking we'd be talking about a B tier system sound quality is there it's not really impressing with any super crispness super power but there's nothing egregious and overall for many different types of music it's gonna sound good on top of that you got wireless Apple CarPlay Android Auto that <coughs> excuse me that being said I would like to see a faster infotainment system every single click has a little bit of delay. Even when you're just pressing the buttons, everything takes a, a little second. All those little micro stutters just adds up to make it feel like not that much of a premium system. And I mean, at the end of the day, it's not like this is a premium. 
premium brand, but Hyundai could do a little bit better, either better processor or different formatting, something like that to improve that. That should be their next step. So uh, subjectively speaking, at this price point, this type of vehicle, this system's still getting a B tier rating. Thank you all so much for watching. If you want to see more on the Santa Fe, we're running the highway fuel economy test right now. We've got a full review as well. And we'll see you on the next one. I'm Charlie for Daily Motor, and as always, drive on.